Great morning, great morning. Welcome once again to Searching the Scriptures. We own our intentional course. That means every day and every all during the day, we are meditating and thinking about what does says the Lord. And that's what we're doing this morning. And so we are excited about um, the journey that the Lord has on has us on. And um, we have been purposing to go back to the beginning, the book of the law. And always say, Everything stems from where it begins. That's where you, the foundation is laid at the beginning. And so we know that God has, uh, Christ is the foundation of the church. And we see in the beginning that Christ is there too. And so we have been studying God's word concerning his promises, what he spoke out of his mouth, what he said, and how he is watching over his word to perform it. And that's the scripture. He's watching over his word to perform it. If he said it, it will come to pass. Okay. So, so far, we have gone to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, then Joseph, then Moses. And now we're in the 13th chapter of the book of Exodus. And something stood out to me concerning uh, what we know that God went through Egypt. But we just, we're just skimming these subjects. Uh, if we were to take our time and go through each one carefully, we would be, uh, we'd have to spend all day, <laughs> all day, and just sit here because there's so much that God has said and that the revelation of what he is uh, intending is given to us by the Holy Spirit. So we're in the 13th chapter where we see uh, God is separating now the firstborn of Israel, not as we did saw in Egypt where he said, I'm coming through and I'm going to take the firstborn of man, beast, everything. I'm going to take it. Everything that opened the womb, I'm going to take it. He's going to take it. Uh, but he had uh, Israel down in Goshen. Now we're going to see the 13th chapter of Exodus where God is now saying to Moses, the firstborn of, of Israel, everything that opened the matrix is to be sanctified. So we look up the word sanctified uh, unto him. And then as we go down, we're going to see that he specifically tells them um, about uh, keeping the Passover lamb. And so we're going to read the 13th chapter and we want to pick up on the coat or the ass that was spared also. And look into that because there's a song that, that um, that's being sung. All things are working for my good. He's intentional. I don't have to worry because it's working for my good. So we see in this scripture, in this passage, that God is intentional. And he even includes the ass, which is a colt, which is a donkey, in the redemption, not to be slain. And we looked that up to find out because as we who know Christ coming into Jerusalem, he rode on an ass. He specifically said, go and tell uh, the one who has the ass to loose him because the master has need for him. So we see all the way back in Exodus that God brought the uh, the redemption of the ass or the colt or the donkey uh, a part of his plan, which we see this here. So that means God is intentional all the way through all of these generations. God had intentions for this particular creature. And not only the uh, the ass, but also it begins to set up guidelines for who is to be, what animal is to be uh, uh, slain, and what animal is to be under the redemption. Okay, so we see here, and we're going to go into it. I'm going to upload the song where, um, that the young man is singing. All things are working for my good. He's intentional. I don't have to worry because it's working for my good. Now, <laughs> we know what God told Abraham to take that, that his seed who was not even born was going to be down in Egypt for 400 years and that God was going to bring them out and he would they would come out with wealth. God is intentional. And a lot of things that's happening in our lives, it's like when Joseph, which we're going to see Joseph ended up in prison, which we saw he was down there in prison. It doesn't, we would say, well, we want to take the um, the easy road or the high road. We want to go that way. But God's pathway for us is an eternal pathway to work out things that um, that is needed in the not only in the outward, but in the inward. As we saw through uh, Joseph, 
uh, uh, through Jacob, who was a trickster, how God changed him. God is changing things, thank you, Jesus, within us and within our families, within our, our very fiber and being. He is, these things are working for our good. He's intentional. And whatever we go through, <laughs> whatever he allowed, like Job said, whatever he allows us to go through. In fact, Job said, he has appointed all the things that happened to me. So God is appointing some things in our lives. And he wants us to know he's intentional. And this came to me when I thought about the ass. What, what, why is the ass being <laughs> redeemed? <laughs> but we know the scriptures is see that he has, as we're going to see throughout the scriptures, that um, creature. And I looked up the ass. It said it's humble. Uh, it's, a, it's a symbol of service, suffering. Um, uh, it is it's humble. Okay. And so when you see the, the, the creature itself that it preserved, and Christ, which we know is, is always shot, um laden down with people, when people are trapping up in the mountains and stuff, they be finding themselves an ass, a, a coat, or a donkey to put all that stuff on. When they go into tra uh, traverse to um, a rocky uh, ground and stuff, they put all that stuff on a donkey. Okay, let's put, load the donkey down <laughs> with some stuff because it said he is a humble and he is um, used for service. And so God, everything that God has or, or needs, what's up? that's why he used the word sanctify, uh, kadesh, uh, consecrate, separate, set apart for me. So um, God will sanctify, he tells, we go see in the scripture here, he tells them to sanctify the firstborn of Israel, all the males, sanctify them. That means separate them unto me, um, set them apart, and then begin to, God, we're going to read it. But it's important for us to know, first of all, the word sanctify. Okay, sanctify, we're going to upload that too. And the young man's song, all things are working for my good. He's intentional. I don't have to worry because it's working for my good, which he told us in Jeremiah 29, his thoughts concerning us of peace and not of evil. But the way that God has to work in us or, or in our lives to not just uh, dress us up on the outside, but to change us on the inside. Thank you, Jesus. Is is it uh, this uh, psalmist and freedom singer? Yeah, it's on the inside. It, it's the inside that God is after. Okay, because He's searching hearts and and trying to reign and to give every man according to His word. And when He began to say in this verse of uh, one of chapter thirteen, sanctify unto me all the firstborn, whatsoever opened the wound among the children of Israel, both man and beast, it is mine. Okay, so the word sanctification is clearly, he said it, but all them belong to him. So my first son, you know, that opened the matrix really was my son Lawrence. It's all belong to him. They belong, he said they belong to me. As but we continue on to see that, uh, and my husband is the only child. Uh, I have so many other ones who said, I'm the only one who really opened the womb, who opened up and came. So God declares they belong to him, whether it's the beast. And the, the, um, that's why he's talked about the, um, the firstling of the ass, thou shall redeem with a lamb. Now the ass is going to be redeemed. And the firstborn of, of, of the children of Israel ought to be redeemed with the lamb. There's got to be a price for it. You know, I was looking at one person. It says um, they had to uh, offer the lamb instead of the of the, the firstborn of men or the firstborn of the air. God has to get his his due, okay? And either you're going to uh, offer up the creature itself or you're going to have to pay with the lamb. The lamb is the payment, okay? <laughs> this song said, Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. So we see here the sanctification, even the things that are sanctified unto God, is cleansed and are purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Okay? So every, he said every, all it belongs. And really the Bible tells us the whole world belongs, the earth belongs to the Lord and the fullness thereof and we that dwell therein. But the, those that are sanctified and separated, the price, the lamb pays the price for them. 
because God is going to have what belongs to him. And we don't realize that the whole everything, every soul, every creature, everything that moveth belongs to God. Hallelujah. And so we're going to pray and go in a little bit deeper about this um this uh this uh coat, this donkey. Hallelujah. And throughout the scriptures you're going to see this donkey being uh, brought forth for the use, the master's use. Like Jesus told him, go and tell him to loose him because the master has need of him. And so whatever God has need of, he is going to bring it forth for the good. He's going to bring it forth to accomplish his purpose. And as we see Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Moses, Aaron, now he's his saying all of those who opened the womb of Israel. Well, he didn't took the ones from Egypt. He said, I'm, taking, I'm going through and I'm taking all of them. Okay. And he took them. He, they all died. Okay. And when you die, where you think you're going to go? Okay. When you die, you're going into the realm where God is. That's what it is. And either you're going to be uh, uh, going into hell or going into the presence of God. Either one. You belong to God. God is going to be the one to decide which way you go. And that's what he's saying. Now he's sanctifying the firstborn of all the males. You know, people want to talk about is, I'm not, listen, God has made his word and they already put his word down and already penned his word. And I don't think any of us have the power to change it because you can't uh, uh, change your hair on your head. You don't know how many that you don't have. You don't know if you're going to get up in the morning. You just, uh, none of us don't have that power. That power belongs to the almighty. And um, Jehovah, in the book of Jehovah's, it talks about um, uh, the sanct I'm the one that sanctified, the one that sanctified, um, the sanctified uh, Kadeshi, which is um, the word Kadesh, which I looked up. That's what the word uh, Jehovah Kadeshi, which is the one who sanctified. The word sanctified means Kadesh. And that's coming off of here, too. So God is revealing himself just by what he's telling us. Okay, let us pray. Hallelujah. Father, we thank and praise you, first of all, for the mercies and the grace that you have given to us to allow us to see another day. We thank you for the mind of Christ, oh God, as the song says, that we woke up this morning with our mind still stayed on you. Thank you for that mind, oh God. We don't take it for granted because everyone does not have that mind. We thank and praise you that you have allowed us, oh God, to stay in our right mind. Hallelujah. We thank and praise you, Lord God. Hallelujah for your mercies toward us, allowing us with activities of our limb, the breath that we breathe. That, hallelujah. The air that we breathe, oh God, the breath that we take. We thank and praise you, O oh God, for your loving kindness toward us. We ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus, that this word that we're going into, O oh God, it will fall on good ground and it help us to understand, hallelujah, what is your will, your way, and your word concerning us, God. Help us to be guided by thy Holy Spirit, Lord God. Help us to yield, my God, not to resist you, not quench you, not to harden our own hearts. God, by God, hallelujah, Lord God, work in us both to will and to do of your pleasure. We thank you for reminding us, God, through this chapter, Lord God. Help us to understand that you are intentional and all things are working for our good, for them who love you and are called according to your purpose. God, by God, Lord God, help us, oh God, not to be concerned with the trials and tribulations and the things of this world, but to put our confidence in you, oh God. We thank and praise you, Lord God, hallelujah, for this word. We pray for everyone in the sound of my voice, God, that your purpose and your will and your plans for us will be carried out. For no one, Lord God, no one can turn your a word, oh God, hallelujah, to, uh, alter your word. We thank and praise you that you are the almighty God. You are the everlasting father. You are the prince of peace. My God, hallelujah, you are our counselor. You are our strong tower. You are everything that we need as we continue to put our souls into your hands as we continue to submit our bodies my god in the name of jesus and focus on your word which is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path help us god not to draw or turn away to another side god help us god in the name take us by the hand and lead us god help us to stand in this season and time we need you like never before lord god help us oh god if there's anything in us as uh, uh, any art or any 
uh, root of bitterness or any strife or anything that's contrary, Lord God. We pray that you would cleanse us and purge us, God, in the name of Jesus. Oh God, hallelujah, have your way in us. As we forgive those who have trespassed against us, we pray that you forgive us. There be nothing, nothing, oh God, that will be uh, between your word for us, O oh God, that there will be nothing. For we know that sin separates us from you, Lord. If there's any confessed sins or any root of bitterness or anything in our lives, God, we pray that you purge us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness and sin as we commit ourselves into your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we're going to read chapter 13. Okay, and then go on. And it, this says verse 1, chapter 13. And the Lord spake unto Moses, Sanctify unto me all the firstborn, whatsoever opens the womb among the children of Israel, both of man and of beast, it is mine, says the Lord. And Moses said unto the people, Remember this day in which ye came out of Egypt, out of the house of bondage, for by strength of hand of the Lord, when we talk about, remember the rod, the hand. Now he used the rod on Israel. And he's, we see the hand. It says, by strength of the hand of, of the Lord brought you out from this place. And this is what when we saw the hand. Uh, we see which God took the hand of the serpent. And God's hand is being revealed. And it says, when he took, told Moses, put your hand in your bosom. And it came out, it was leopard. And when he put it back in, it was cleansed. God's letting them know, I brought you out with my hand. Thank you, Jesus. And when God goes in and to bring our souls out of sin, how about out of death? It is through the mighty hand of God. Thank you, Jesus. It said, there shall no leaven bread be eaten. MD 7, uh, it says, for by strength and out of the place, there shall no leaven bread be eaten. This day shall be shall ye be out. This day came ye out in the month Ab A B I B Abby Abbe. Anyway, we're gonna find a new pronunciation for that. And and then it shall be it shall be when the Lord shall bring thee into the land of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Hivites, the Jebusites which is seven nations, which he swear unto your fathers to give a land flowing with milk and honey, that thou shall keep this service in this month. And he says the month is Ab, which is, um, um, we've said it was around springtime, okay? So they are to keep it. Seven days thou shalt eat unleavened bread in the seventh month, shall be a feast unto the Lord. And this is, a, is he's setting up the feast of Passover and is to be kept seven days. Thank you, Jesus. Seven days. Um, unleavened bread shall be eaten seven days. And there shall no leavened bread be seen in thee. No leavened bread be seen with thee. Neither shall there be leaven seen with thee in all thy quarters. Okay? So not only is the seen with thee, that you're going to be carrying it around. Okay? But so now we talk about when he says, not only in be seen with thee, but not in your quarters. I mean, in your house. But <clears throat> when it's seen with thee, now we see within our own vessels, we are not to have leaven. Which leaven represents sin, y'all. Okay? Lying, stealing. And when he says, go around and clean your house from living, looking for any form of living, anything that will, 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 will cause a rise. So in our lives, if we say that there'll be no living in thee or in your house, okay, that means in us, this is a time. Now we talk about um, consecration. We talked about um, fasting. We talk about um, setting ourselves apart. So any issues, whether it's lying or stealing, or deceit, or sneakiness, or any little thing that we have, little habits that we have, that we just kind of brush it away, that is nothing. We got to make a, a deliberate attempt, a deliberate attempt to stop it, and don't do it, okay? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
It says, seven days thou shalt eat unleavened bread, and in the seventh month shall be a feast to the Lord. Unleavened bread shall be eaten uh, seven days, and there shall be no leavened bread be seen with thee, neither shall there be leaven seen with thee in all thy quarters. Thou shalt show thy son in that day, saying, this is done because of that which the Lord uh, did unto me when I came forth out of Egypt. Making it personal, okay? Making it personal. Like you might say, well, we're in the group. And that's a lot of time people think, well, the group is sanctified and I could be in doing what I want to do because I'm in the group. But it says, it, uh, when, the, when they brought him out of Egypt, he made it, them make it personal. What the Lord has done to me. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, and he said, this, this is what you're going to say. And it shall come, to, shall be a sign unto thee upon thy, well, um, verse 8. And thou shalt show thy son in that day, saying, this is done because of that which the Lord has uh, did unto me when I came out. Not the word we. I came out. A lot of time people want to include things because you know, <clears throat> you're among people who are clean, you're among people, you know, who are anointed, and you're in the group. <laughs> you know, I'm traveling with the bishops, I'm traveling with the, the apostles, but you know you're not clean. But I'm just in the group, so you think it's safe, okay? Because I'm, I'm with the group, I think I'm safe. No, it says, um, clearly, in verse 8 of the 13th chapter, it said, This is done because of that which the Lord did unto me when I came forth out of Egypt, personally. When I came out of sin. Salvation is not something where we talk about when they ate the Passover lamb. It's not something you can share. You know, well, that was in chapter 12. You can't just say, well, you know, um, I'm uh, connecting with people who are anointed. I'm connecting with people who are sanctified. And therefore, I'm safe. No. That's why we leave right over here in chapter 13. He said, no, when I came out. Because even though they was in the house with the blood. Okay, God know if you're in the house under the blood, if that means that you are are, are consecrating yourself or in your consciousness. See, a lot of times people try to get a Bible by joining a group of people. I'm with the bishops. I'm with them. And no good and well, they ain't clean. Okay, well, anyway, let's go on. Verse 9, and it shall be for a sign unto thee upon thy hand and for a memorial between thy eyelids. Um, that the Lord's law may be in thy mouth. For with a strong hand has the Lord brought thee out of Egypt. Thou shalt therefore keep his ordinance in his season from year to year. And it shall be when the Lord shall bring thee into the land of the Canaanites, as he swear unto thee and unto thy fathers, and shall give it to thee. That thou shalt set apart unto the Lord all that open the matrix. So when you come into the land, I want all the firstborn to be set apart, which is sanctified, Kadesh, which means sanct in, in this Jehovah, Kadesh, Kadeshi, means sanct the one who sanctified. Okay. And it shall be when the Lord shall bring thee into the land of the Canaanites, as he swear unto thee and to thy fathers, and shall give it to thee that thou shalt set apart unto the Lord all that opened the matrix, matrix, which is the womb, and every firstling that cometh of a beast which thou hast, the male shall be the Lord's. Okay, the males. Okay, that's, that's what an enemy probably trying to tell some people, you're not a male. But all the males, <laughs> he says, that open the matrix shall be the Lord's. And every firstling of an ass Thou shalt redeem with a lamb, and it sh uh, if thou will not redeem it, then thou shalt break his neck. So the colt or the or the donkey, if you don't want to redeem it, then break his neck. That first thing, kill it. Okay, but if you want want to redeem it, then offer a lamb up for it. It's gonna cost something. Thank you, Jesus. That's what when you think the offering up these lambs don't cost, you got to buy them. They had to buy these lambs. Okay. They, they had to be a price. And even the lamb that we are now covered with, there was a great price. Thank you, Jesus. Well, that's why the song said, Jesus paid it all. All to him we owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed us white as snow. Okay, personally. 
Okay, there's a price for you. I mean, do you go to the store and get a lamb and just say, I'm just going to grab this lamb? No, the lamb is something you got to pay a price for. Okay, and it had to be without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. Okay, and every first thing of the ass thou shalt redeem with a lamb, and if thou wilt not redeem it, then thou shalt break his neck. And all the firstborn of man among thy children shall thou redeem. That means. Once a year, all your males, in fact, he said that we're going to see how many times he's going to have all your males who uh, first open up the matrix, you are to slay a lamb for them. Somebody is going to pay the price, okay, to keep them, okay, because they are now sanctified unto God. Everything is set aside for God. Whatever you set aside for God is sanctified, okay? A price is being paid. You know, a lot of times people say, well, we dedicate this building to the Lord. And then they they forget about the dedication, okay? They go and let the devil go in there and let the devil set up. You know, even in our houses, we we set, we ask God to, um, we, we're going to see as we go on how Moses was, the blood was applied to everything. So there's a price. When you give something to God, like people say, well, your tithes belong to God. We got a lot of times, we got some churches. The churches are sanctified and consecrated. This is your house, Lord. Like David said, we're going to build you. This is your house, God. But then they let other things come in and, and offer. And God is not happy, okay? A lot of things God not happy with us about y'all. <laughs> I hope you know it too. Because we are really messing up a lot of time. Okay, let's go verse 14. And it shall be when thy son asks thee in times to come, saying, What is this that thou shalt say unto him? By strength of hand, the Lord brought us out of Egypt from the house of bondage. And it came to pass that when Pharaoh would hardly let us go, that the Lord slew all the firstborn of the land of Egypt, both the firstborn of man and the firstborn of beast. Therefore, I sacrifice to the Lord all that opened the matrix, being males, but all the firstborn of the of, it says, therefore, I sacrifice to the Lord all that opened the matrix uh, being males, but all the firstborn of my children are redeemed. So now he's explaining to the next generation, Father, why are we killing all these animals? Okay. And he reminded him. He's reminding him and, be, and he's probably the firstborn son saying, well, why are you doing this here? I have to re redeem to redeem uh, you. I need to offer a lamb and the rest of these are firstborn. We're killing them. Because it said, all of the firstborn. So the, Israel was always setting aside the firstborn animals, okay, to sacrifice once a year, okay, and that's in their time. So every year, this Passover ritual was carried out, and the, the first, it knew this, well, we got the firstborn of this lamb, it's going to be sacrificed, okay, and the coat, and the, and the, which is the uh, ass, we're going to uh, not kill him. Because he was, he was a beast of service, uh, uh, of suffering. Okay, he was um, humble. Okay, so God didn't. If they had a, 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 a ass, which we're gonna see, they would. And he was the first one. They didn't. God said, "Don't kill him because you have need of him." And God uh, gave redemption for that creature. Now, the rest of these creatures. The, the cow and the different one, they, if the firstborn, they're going to be killed. Okay. So now Moses is, um, is and it's come to pass when Pharaoh would hardly have let us go that the Lord sh uh, slew all the firstborn of the land of Egypt, both the firstborn of man and the firstborn of beast. Therefore, I sacrifice to the Lord all that opened the matrix, being males. But all the firstborn of my children I redeem. Okay, and it shall be for a token. And the word token, okay, it's like a ring is a token. Okay, I looked at the word token. It's a token. It means it, it's just a uh, um, symbol. Okay, so these lambs are just for token. And it shall be for a token upon thy hand and our frontless between thy eyes. For by strength of hand, the Lord brought us out of Egypt. And it came to pass when Pharaoh had let the people go that God led them through the way of the land of the Philistines, although that was not near. 
for God said, let's, well, we're going to stop at verse 16 because we want to go and talk about the, the uh, him taking them into the wilderness, which is a whole different. And the purpose of, when we say all things are working for our good, he's intentional. <laughs> and he's going to be intentional when he take them into the wilderness too. That's what's going to We're stopping now with the word sanctification and the fact that the ass was redeemed because God had need of him. All the way back in Exodus, God was saying, don't slay the first male of this creature because he's a, he carry, helps, he helps carry, which we know in the New Testament, he carried the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. He, whatever God has for his purpose, he redeems. <laughs> whatever he has for his purpose is under the redemption. That's why we say when we are saved, we have, a, what do you think we say for? For his purpose. <laughs> According to his purpose. Thank you, Jesus. And our purpose is to magnify him, to glorify him. Thank you, Jesus. He said, I created people for my purpose. We, it's not, well, um, God saved me so I could just do what I want to do. No, no. It's for his purpose, okay? When Christ did the work, he said he did a, whatever the Father wanted. Thank you, Jesus. And all things are working for our good, for he's intentional. We don't have to worry when we realize that we are saved for God's purpose. Just like this ass was redeemed by a lamb. Okay? Because God had need of him. And God have need of you. And God have need of me. It's not to do what you want to do. Or to say, well, the, uh, well, I'm with the group of people. As we saw in chapter 13. There's a lot in chapter 13, y'all. He, he, he's telling to the son, when I came forth out of Egypt. Okay? The lamb was there. The blood was supplied because of me. That's why you tell him, um, you know, you got to... Um, Take this unto yourself. You got to eat this lamb yourself. Everybody have to eat. You just can't say, well, I'm in the house and, and I'm not going to eat. That is an attitude and God is not happy, okay? And I'm telling you, when he used the word sanctified, Kadesh, consecration, separation, set apart, okay? And you think you can do what we want to do? I know myself. Sometimes we, when we first get saved, I mean, we really first get saved and the Holy Ghost we need to right then just grab people, snatch them right there and say, listen, you got saved today. And so that's why you need counseling in the church because a lot of people get saved and get the Holy Ghost and they don't really know what happened to them. And then they go right back within a, a short time and somebody enticed them and then and, and then they uh, sin. But God, I mean, a lot, of, it's, a lot of people don't know what it means to be sanctified. You know, they just go... In and out of, of, of sin. In and out of sin. But that's not correct. Because remember we talk about when they eat the lamb. No, no uncircumcised person should eat. You know the way of holiness and sanctification is not really talked about. Thank you Jesus. You just can't do anything when you, when you are separated. Okay just put it this way. It says separated. You said they're mine. If you belong to God, and then, okay, you got your body and your thing, and you say, well, I belong to God in the spirit realm. And then it says, God is now inside of your body. And you say, well, I'm going to go out here. Like a lot of us did when we was first in our 20s, and we wanted to have husbands. And we, we really didn't associate our bodies with our soul. <laughs> People were doing things with their body and not realize they had given their soul when you give your soul to God, your body belongs to God. Your body belongs to him, okay? Because your body is where your soul is housed, okay? I'm just speaking this because a lot of times we're out of ignorance. You said my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. That's true because you really don't know when you get sanctified and the Holy Ghost is in you. You don't spoke in tongues and then here comes the enemy from your old boyfriends and old things and you go right back out there, okay? That is... Uh, that needs to be discussed, okay? The word sanctify, and he talk about the firstborn that opened the womb is mine. Thank you, Jesus. It means, in other words, it's important for the father to, t what you see here, he's telling the son, well, why? Why are you doing this? And then he said, because what is, the son says, what is this that thou shall say unto him, by strength of, of hand, the Lord brought us out of Egypt. 
Thank you, Jesus, from the house of bondage. In other words, you're talking to your next generation. You're talking to your firstborn to let them know. And it really, you should talk all, like you told them in Abraham, all the males on the eighth day are supposed to be circumcised. There's not enough instructions in righteousness. I mean, this is what I think, okay? We, it's only by the grace of God, really, we're saved now because we not under that taught in my family. We were just, just you know, just whatever. I mean, it, it just it saddens your heart to know, you know. I'm again, I'm getting emotional again. <laughs> How we start off in this world, we are so you talk about um, not knowing what is the will, the way, and the word of God. But God is good. Thank you, Jesus. And God is merciful. God is long suffering. God is patient. Thank you, Jesus. God is kind. All the fruit of the Spirit is the attributes and the character of God. Not willing that any should perish. And when you are sanctified or you said, I'm now a consecrated, separated unto God. And then you want to go back out there and play with the devil. I could tell you for my own self because it happened to me, y'all. <laughs> In my early 20s, I got saved with the Holy Ghost. And then I start feeling I'm by myself. I don't have nobody. And all these little thoughts running across your head. When is supposed to make God... It, it, that's why the, the, it's important for those who've been in the church a long time, which I'm talking to you now, okay? You just got saved and you were young and you were separated and consecrated to God. What? Do not go and try to chart out your own path, okay? Thank you, Jesus. Don't go in there and, and, and I belong to God. I know I belong to God. And then you go another way. Wait on God and trust God because all things are working for your good. He is intentional. God is intentional, as we see here with this ass. <laughs> and every see, every phase of this Passover is being indicated in this first book of uh, the Torah. We done went through Genesis, how God is intentional, how God is watching over what he has said, how he is choosing the vessels specifically, and those that he chooses, he is, he is purging and cleansing, as with Joseph. As with Moses, we're going to go on and see. As with Moses, he, as we, all the way down, God is dealing with his vessels too. Because his word is true. Okay, so we have the word sanctify. And we got the ass. <laughs> I think them two, the, and the first of born of Israel. All the males. And it's to be done and no leaven. So these are the things we need to put into our conscience. If God has called you, sanctified you and separated you unto himself you got to be mindful of getting yourself it's when it says no leaven which me, no leaven means no lying no stealing no sinning no no fornication you know leaven no no leaven no no sin thank you jesus there's as much as possible you know to live a holy life walk before him and be it says uh be thou perfect that's what the scripture is going to tell us that means when there's issues, even if you do something and get it right, you know, get get your, your life, um, as you say, an open book. You know, tr Make your uh, decision to try to live a holy, righteous life because God has separated you unto him. Now, some people think, well, you know, <clears throat> they got a connection with God. I told you yesterday, if God did not spare his own son, when the time in the garden, when Christ was there in the garden, said, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. Okay? And he sought it with tears, like drops of blood. He was not just crying like a little water. No, he was crying. He was really pouring out. And he said, nevertheless. So we know, too, if God did not spare his son, what make you think he going to let us get away with everything? Because our flesh is telling us. The flesh is saying, I want to do this, I want to do that, okay? Or our mouth, as my sister said, we gave you the scriptures from my sister. And my mouth, it says, the scripture says, instead of watch before my mouth, that I sin not with my tongue. This consecration and sanctification, thank you, Jesus, is important because it means we belong to God. This is important. This chapter 13 and 13 followed 12, telling you how to eat it. 
in haste and your loins girded about and your shoes on and your staff in your hand. You mean I'm ready. I'm not laid back and relaxed, okay? In haste, eating it in haste. This way of salvation is not just, I'm just going to, you know, ease my way. No, you're going to have to um have an attitude of <laughs> in haste, okay? Okay, I got you. This is a journey that you're on and you're not laid back. You got to be um, pressing. You got to be moving forward, okay? So anyway, we're going to, by the grace of God, deal with the wilderness. And there's a lot in the wilderness. I put a little bit of the wilderness stuff in the book that I wrote about the what is happening in the wilderness. And by the grace of God, we're going to deal with the wilderness uh, if the Lord see fit. And we'll be able to deal with that next. Next, The wilderness itself. But the, the, the day is sanctified, talking about the ass and talking about the first um, ones uh, being separated of Israel. The first males. But main word is sanctified. 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 Okay? Sanctified. He said, and they belong to him. The firstborn is uh, is born. All the males that open the matrix belong to God. And they are to, there's a price to be paid. The lamb has to be paid for those firstborn males. So we see all throughout the scripture that the, the ass needed a redemption and everything else. God said, I'm taking it. There's going to be a time that God going to take everything again. Hallelujah. And not for the, uh, and, but those who you're going to redeem is going to have to be under the blood. And when he come through this world again, like he came through Egypt, he only took the firstborn of Egypt. Okay. That didn't, that was not. Oh, he only took the firstborn males. But the time is going to come and God going to come through the whole earth. And everything that's not under the blood, he's going to deal with it. Okay. So we pray. That this is encouraging you and helping you to be grounded and rooted in the word. I went along, but I'm, I'm going to close out now. We pray that you're abiding in the word and the word is abiding in you. The word sanctification, Kadesh, which means the Lord Jehovah that sanctifieth. This is all for this paper too. Didn't I tell you he's going to start reviewing? We don't have the Lord that smite and a few other ones we don't miss, okay? That he is the Lord. And that's all on this here. All this talking about. When he said to Moses, I will reveal myself as Jehovah. So we see in here, sanctified. He's letting them know what it means to be sanctified. The Lord that sanctifieth, the Lord that smiteth. Thank you. As we continue on, we're going to see God in all of these things. <laughs> oh, Lord. When I saw sanctified and talking about um, eating that bread and, 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 and it to be personally unto you. Okay. The Lord should be in thy mouth. Okay, and it should be upon thy hand and in that and for a memorial between thy eyes. Okay, that's verse uh nine. Okay. If you could, we could break down that what it means uh uh upon thy hand, uh between thy eyes and in your mouth. <laughs> your uh, uh hands, your eyes, and your mouth. Now you know that's a little lesson right there. Your hands, your eyes. Now, that's a whole new lesson, y'all. That's a lesson. The word is, it is to be between, upon your hands. Now, that we can take that. Verse 9, but we're going to move on because we can stay in the word. This is important to the hands, the eyes, and the mouth. Okay, verse 9 of 13. It shall be for a sign unto thee upon thy hand for a memorial between thy eyes um, that the Lord... Uh, that the the law Lord's law may be in thy mouth. Okay. And so you need to be picking this book up. You need to be looking at it so it can be in your mouth. Okay. That's a whole new lesson. Okay. Well, we're not gonna stop there. We gonna go. <laughs> I tell you, when you when you get into the word, you're like Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. You can't do nothing but humble yourself. You can't do but say, Lord, it's only by the grace of God I'm saved. I'm by. I, and I'm telling you, in the house of God, I'm an old woman. I got saved in my 20s, 24 years old. And I'm telling you, and I'm still, as much as I'm in the word, there's times when I still, I get angry. It's okay, it's okay to get angry, but sin not. You know when you, sin some, when you say something you shouldn't and you hurt somebody, you know you just sent out a dagger. You know you sent a dagger out. <laughs> okay, and God hear that too. He hear everything. You know you're hurting people with your mouth. It says... Your hand, that was uh, Exodus 
13 and 9. If you get into the word, the Lord going to feed you too, okay? But next, by the grace of God, we're going into the wilderness. And the wilderness one is going to be. I did one on the wilderness before, but this we're going to take it, take our time by the grace of God and deal with it, okay? Let us close out. Father, we thank and praise you, first of all, for your mercies and your grace and your long suffering and patience toward us. We acknowledge our sins. We have truly missed a mark many times, Lord God. Thank you. We have come short of your glory. And we pray for your mercies and your grace toward us. Forgive us. Help us, O oh God, to sustain, hallelujah, in the liberty wherein you have made us free, not to be entangled again with the yokes of bondage. We pray for every soul in the sound of my voice, Lord God. My God, we pray, hallelujah, that our hearts and minds will take away our stony hearts, unforgiveness, O oh God. Anything that's in us that's not like you, Lord, take it out of us. Cleanse us and make us whole. Purge us. By God, hallelujah, every which way, Lord God, that we might be vessels of honor unto you. That we might be fit for the master's use. As we yield to you our body, soul, and spirit, sanctify us, Lord God. And help us to know what it means to be sanctified. And even through the sanctification, the price were paid for our sanctification by the Lamb of God, which take away the sins of the world. Help us to remember even the ass, hallelujah, the lamb was shed for that, for the purpose of the ass, for that ass, for that donkey, Lord. And we pray, hallelujah, that we will understand that you have need of us and that we're not our own anymore, that we belong to you. It's in Jesus' name we pray and count it done. Amen. Amen. So we're going to keep on going. I hope you all enjoying it. <laughs> I know you're going to be feeling it because I feel it too, okay? I'm feeling it too. There's a lot in here. Uh, we need to have just just um, Bible studies all the time. You know, it's just, people you just talking off the top of our head is not sufficient. We need to get into the Word and the Word to get into us. Thank you, Jesus. You need to meditate. We talk about that by meditate on it. Thank you, Jesus. He says. Anyway, I'm going back over. Please push the like button. Sorry about the length of it. I pray that you are listening and continue to follow. Encourage someone else who is purposing in their heart that God is drawing you to him. Join us as we go into the word of God. Thank you, Jesus, which is a lamp and a light and a mirror and a hammer and so many things. I'm going to get the thing I had before from the Bible school talking about all the things that the word of God is. And we're going to see that it is going to be working on us. Please push the like button and encourage someone else to come along. Holly, remember this song. All things are working for our good, for he's intentional. I don't have to worry because it's working for my good. Whatever it is, it's working for your good. <laughs> In Jesus' name, be blessed.